In the previous video, we learned that values, not variables, have a data type and that the data type is essentially a description of what you want to do with the data. There's more to it than that, but for our purposes right now, it's essentially what we intend to do with the data. And we learned of four data types and we'll learn about a couple more a little bit later. There's the number data type, the string, the bool, and the undefined. So let me ask you this, what happens when we need to use them together? Uh, and they don't quite work the way that we think they should. Um, what options do we have then? So uh, let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call this coercion. C-O-E-R-C-I-O-N dot J-S. I think that's how you spell it. And uh, let's start off with a quick little example here. So let A equals 7. Let B equals the string, the literal string. So I want to use single quote, six, single quote. All right. And then um, let C equals A plus B. And then console.log answer. And then C. All right. Before we execute this application, what do you think is going to be output uh, when we run it? What will the answer be? All right, get that in your mind. And now let's go uh, node and coercion. And uh, looks like we don't get anything at all. Oh, I need to save it. Okay, there we go. Let's try that again. There we go. We get the answer seven, six. Wait, seven plus six should be 13, right? Why are we getting 76? Something I can see what's happening. It's not treating these as two numeric values. It's treating them both as string values. So it's not adding two numbers together. Somehow it's coercing that A from a string in or from an integer into a string and then concatenating together A and B. So this operator, the plus operator, we saw how we can use it for addition, but we also, it plays double duty and it's the uh, string concatenation operator. But moreover, JavaScript realizes that it can't add a, a number in a string. Those are, it's like adding, you know, an apple and a car together. It's not like making an apple and an orange even. these It's not like fruit salad. It's like two disparately different things. What do I do? Well, I will... I will take the numeric value and coerce it, convince it, force it against its will to become a string, and then I will concatenate the two together. So that's the notion of coercion. And most people consider that to be an evil thing or a very dangerous thing. Um, and others just say, well, it's just what happens. You know, it's just part of the language. Now, what if I really wanted to perform addition on two integers, well then I would need to take steps to force the string six to become an, a number so that I could then add them together. And so to do that, there's actually a special function that will force that conversion. So let me uh, change this just a little bit. And um, we already have the value b, so I'll just reuse the value b, and I'll set b equal to parse int. Now, I want you to notice something. I haven't really talked about Visual Studio Code much, but one of the nice things about Visual Studio Code is that it popped up this little box called IntelliSense. And IntelliSense is just a visual cue as I'm typing to show me things that I might need to reference or things that will help me to, to find the right command or the right idea. In this case, I knew it was something parse, so I start typing in and I can then use the arrow keys to start looking. I'm like, oh yeah, there's par parse float. That would give me a number with decimal values, but this in this case, the, the string that I want to use, I know that it will only be a value without uh, without any decimal point. So I want to use the parse int. Now what I can do is just use the space 
bar or like the opening parenthesis, whatever the next logical character is to do what's called code completion. So I don't have to type everything else. Now in this case, I know that I'm gonna to need to use the parenthesis for reasons I'll talk about later. So I'm just gonna do an open parenthesis. Well, it didn't do it for me. Well, there we, let's just go ahead and use the tab key instead. <laughs> All right, so the tab key will give me what I want. Now I'm inside the the uh, parentheses that I need to pass in, first of all, the string that I wanna change. So in this case, take the value of B, and then I need to give it optionally what's called a radix or a radix, and that is essentially the base system. So if I wanted to, um, to use like a hexadecimal, I might give it six, but in this case, I'm gonna give it 10 because I wanna use uh, a base 10 or a decimal uh, conversion, all right? so. And that's a little technical, but typically if we use 10 in there, we're gonna be just fine. So essentially what I wanna do is take this six and based on the normal decimal system, I wanna convert that into a numeric value. And then I wanna continue on in lines four and five like we had before. Let's see what we get this time. The answer is 13, just as we had hoped. All right, so the parse int is a built-in function to JavaScript, and I can count on it being available in Node or in a web browser or any other implementation of JavaScript. All right, so um, I guess this begs the question, what if I try to do something kind of evil with this? So let D equal uh, parse int, and then I'm gonna use the tab key to do the code completion. And this time I'm gonna pass in a character that will not convert to a, or or even a string that will not convert into a numeric value, especially one that's decimal. So I'm gonna save this. Well, let's go ahead and console.log it. And D. And so let's go to that, and then we'll do this. All right, and I get N-A-N, which represents not a number. It's not really an error, it's just telling us that the value we passed in is not a number. Um, we could actually do something along these lines as well. Um, let E equals is N-A-N. And then I can give it some numeric value. In this case, I'll give it D. And I'll do console.log E. So let's save that, run it again. And so this time, now I'm evaluating whether D is not a number, and that is true. It is not a number because I can see it here that's printed out, all right? So we saw two built-in functions, but there's a bunch of built-in functions for various things, uh, all kind of centered around, in this case, just working with coercion and checking the results of that attempt to, to coerce or, uh, or convert one data type into another, all right? Unfortunately, there's no parse Boolean, so you can't take a string of true or false and convert it into a Boolean. You'll have to take a few extra steps. There's a bunch of, of examples online for that. And so depending on the type of conversion that you're attempting to, to perform, um, it may not be easy to convert from one to the other. There's always a way, and usually you can find some code online, especially on a site like Stack Overflow that will help you figure that out. But that's all I wanted to say. Let's continue on in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks.